We're not going to see Watson yeah. tonight. Right. Obviously. Right. And I hope we see him warming up or something, though. Yeah. Just to, you know. What do you look for if you see him? If I, uh, if you see him working out, right. If you see him out on the field, yeah. what are you going to look well, for? Well, you remember like last year, uh, with me, we saw, I saw Trevor and you know, the next, the next day or the next time I was on the show on Monday, I was like, Trevor Lawrence, like blew me away. Right. Because I was like, he's fixed the mechanical issues. And I was, I was amazed by that. So one, I'm want to look at the specimen, the athlete, but two, yeah, it just, for, for a, a guy like Watson tonight, I know he can play the game. It's just about getting out there and playing. But just, yeah, just a look of, hey, how's the ball coming out of his hand? Is it coming out like I remember before all this stuff happened where it just was pure and perfect every time, right? Uh, it, it, you know, how he's interacting with players, all of that. Those are the things I'll look for. But, you know, he's one that I kind of know what he is. I mean, we know if he gets back to where he's – you know, capable of. He's one of the five or six best quarterbacks in football. So I think it's really like, I don't know if there's anything I'll gleam as much, glean from him as much in pregame as maybe a guy like Trevor Lawrence last year a little bit, more other than just, man, he looks good and he seems confident and the team says he's got the offense, you know, under control and here we go. If you'd have a chance to walk up to him and ask one question tonight, what would Ooh. it be? I would keep it football specifically, but just like – you know, hey, we we feeling comfortable now. You feel like you got the offense, you know, where you want it in your mind to where, hey, man, are we gonna are we yeah. gonna start to see Deshaun Watson again, yeah. right? I'd, I'd want to see like his look in his eye. And That's exactly part, what right? I'm thinking. A right. very simple, how are you doing? Right. And as he answers it, look right into yeah, his eyes, right. and the answer yeah. is gonna come right yeah. out. Yeah. That, that's I I would be like, hey, man, what's up? How you doing? You know how I am, and you know what's up, dude, and blah blah blah, and then, hey, what do you know? Hey, the offense, you getting it? You know, with a few four-letter words, you know me. He once had a song yeah. Yeah. that had a four-letter Watson. word in it. It is so effing awesome. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, that's my fault. I'm the one that pulled the cord. I pulled the cord uh, on the doll. There's yeah, a snake yeah. in my boots. That that's was, one of your that sayings. Was, uh, Deshaun Watson is so freaking awesome. Yep, yep. That's, uh, he, he was, he's, um, he's amazing when he's hitting on all cylinders. And I, with the, the age he's at and the part of his career, I would think he's going to get back to that. But it's, it is – the look in the eye, has he been scarred emotionally and mentally by everything that's gone on, right? I do say to you, I said to you one time, I think a few weeks ago, like, he's certainly not as charismatic at interviews and in right. front of the mic as he once guarded. was. He's guarded. You never know where it's coming exactly. from. Exactly. He feels know like where people that, are looking at him a yep. side eye, whatever. Yep. He's, they don't look at me the same way. I, I feel that from him, and I just wonder if that will affect play at all. If he was, and I don't want to get too far down this road, but yeah. it's relevant because the Browns played him. Yeah, that's right. And this is the first game of the first season where they will have him start to finish barring injury. Yeah. If he is a person who ultimately, deep down, is a good person, right. but has this aspect that manifested itself in a very wrong way, sure. he's got a conscience. Yeah. So he's carrying that around, and he knows what he did. And I know that he still has yet to do the full and complete, I'm responsible. There's been that edge of standoffishness, that notion that, that he is innocent. Yeah. And he's still got a couple of pending lawsuits. So this thing isn't over yet. Right. It's still hanging over him. Right. And I don't know what's up with the existing litigation. Uh, I'm a little surprised one of them hasn't gone to trial by now. And now that we're into football season, it's kind of hard for him to pull the plug on everything and go – sit in a courtroom for three or four days. Right. So it's still there. It's still part of his story. And he seems to be always aware of that, yeah. which speaks to the possibility that he does deep down understand that what happened was wrong. It was messed up. And it's never going to go away. And if it ever does go away, it's going to take some time. Yeah. And it's not going to be gone this year. Yeah. It's just going to be there floating around. It's not top of story. It's not like something we're going to talk about in the pregame show. But everybody knows. Right. And and who I mean I don't expect time. I don't expect any of the fans tonight to be chanting anything or right. giving him a hard time. Right. But when he goes to Pittsburgh, when he goes to Baltimore, when he goes to Cincinnati, when he goes to other cities, yeah, they're going to be ruthless. It's going to be baked they're in. Gonna be ruthless. It's it's low hanging fruit exactly for the average fan who believes buying a ticket gives you license to say yeah right and do whatever you want to do and direct it to the key players from the opposing team. Yeah, it's um. It, it, it's a tough situation where I feel like, yeah, only time, play on the field, continuing to show a good side in front of the microphone will slowly but surely 
you know, hopefully wipe away the thoughts that we have when we look at them in the mind sometimes. You know, oh, man, he did that, blah, blah, blah. Just, you know, getting over that aspect. But it, it's tough to get over. I mean, we've seen guys getting some things like this in professional sports before. The first one that comes to my mind is like John Rocker, remember? He said all those things in the, the picture for oh, the— Oh, God, yes, right? yes. And he got vilified, and just everybody was coming out, and he couldn't mentally overcome right. that. He was one of the best closers in baseball, and he fell off earth, yeah. right? You know, so that's where I don't think that's going to happen to Deshaun Watson. But will he? I don't think he's ever going to fall off Earth. But will he get back to the prime Deshaun Watson? You know, and be able to handle all that because of all the things you mentioned just a second ago. Pete mentioned something in my ear that I think right. is is a possible strategy that the Browns would want to consider, and that would be find a way for Deshaun Watson to sit down with Ben Roethlisberger. That's another one to bring up, right? Because I was racking my brain. I was like, yeah. hey, I know there's other people here. Well, right, and but. the fact that you had to rack your brain yeah. shows you how it worked. It, exactly. exactly. He had, now, right. different scenarios yeah. factually, but similar yeah. circumstance. Same ballpark. Allegations of sexual misconduct. Right, right. He was sued for rape in Nevada. Mm -hmm. Then the following March, there was the incident in Milledgeville, Georgia, that almost resulted in prosecution end of the day inconclusive i still think there was a settlement that we don't know about and won't know about because if the confidentiality of the settlement is respected we never would know about it yeah. but then the nfl gets involved suspends him six games reduced to four based on good behavior he comes back and plays they go to the super bowl that year and it wasn't forgotten by 2011 but you play your way into pushing it out yes. of people's active memory. That's and right. by the time he retired, if you even mention it, you're a jerk. How dare you even mention that? That's 12 years ago. Why would you bring that up? Right. Well, it's part of his history. Yeah, right. it's, it's a line in his obituary, right? How can it not be? But remember how that game went against the Browns. Yeah. The clouds parted and Ben Roethlisberger ascended into football heaven. It was perfect. Yeah. It was one of those rare moments where you couldn't script it. And the thing from 2010 was a distant memory, not even a memory. It was gone. So you lay the foundation for that by what? Show up, play well. Right. And if he plays well, we'll begin to forget. If he struggles, it's going to be, ah, well, we know why he's struggling. He can't get past everything that's gone on the last yeah, three years. Yeah, I, you know, th th that's what I look for. That just adds even more pressure to the Browns de and definitely. him. De agreed. You know, I, I look at the Browns, you know, a little bit like the Jets in, in a way of, you know, I don't think their roster is as talented as the Jets, but you and I, I think, both agree, look at it and go, yeah, there's definitely potential for playoffs and things they do there. You know, you they are the biggest wild card in all of football. Biggest this wild year. card in all of football. And I think when you throw on top the Watson stuff like you're talking about, Stefanski, it's a big year for him and all of that. You know, they're another team where you look at the start of their schedule and you just go, hey, how they start out? Can they build some confidence? You know, silence the naysayers and those people out there to where they can be in a spot that they can build something. They got the Bengals, the Steelers, the Titans, and the Ravens to start the year. It's manageable. But it ain't easy, as we know. I mean, the Bengals, Steelers, divisional rivals, Ravens week four, divisional rival, and the Tennessee Titans. I know people are, you know, not expecting them to be in the Super Bowl, but I don't think they're going to be like some pushover. I don't think they're getting quite the respect they should. But, you know, the, the thing I would worry about, like what we've said with the Jets, is if it's one and three or one and four, because they go to a bye week and then they play the 49ers. Will the wheels fall off? Will things start to go a little crazy? You know, it'll embolden now the Browns fans to start maybe saying things to Deshaun Watson, right? Like in, in the crazy things you were talking about when he's on the road. That's where I would worry about it going wrong for the Cleveland Browns. That's why there's so much pressure, because it's year two of that five-year yeah. fully guaranteed contract, not year one. Gets back to the suspension. There were owners who wanted it to be less than a year, so the Browns were forced to burn year one. Now it's year two. When do you get the return on all the money you committed and all the draft picks you gave up? Right. Are we getting a return this year? And I think it's full boil panic next year yeah. if this year doesn't oh, work. No so, doubt about that. And and look, they got a little bit of a bonus with the Joe Burrow injury. Yeah. Not that we're saying, you know, and it's it's but it's reality. He's hurt. He's hurt. And, and he's even not if be he's ready cylinders. for week one, yeah. even if he's ready for week one. 
he hasn't prepared for no. the season the way that he could. Right. And what happened last year when he had the appendectomy? He came back and played week one, and the Steelers beat him yeah. in Cincinnati. Right. Five interceptions, right? Then they went to Dallas the next week. He didn't, He you know, played solid, but not Joe Burrow-like. And all of a sudden, we're going, man, the Bengals are 0-2. Yeah, this is, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it is a little bit of an advantage that they got the Bengals at home. The Bengals have struggled a little bit against the Browns for, for whatever reason. And Burrow will not be totally... 100% Joe Burrow. So that is a little gift. And then you got the Steelers on Monday Night Football. You got a long week. And, uh, you know, you hope you can catch that team who's kind of still got a young quarterback and figuring itself out, too. To Yeah, we'll see where they go with the start of this season. There is potential for this football team. And if Watson and everything get going and he starts to get hot, then watch out. Because, I, I you know, we, we saw him carry teams and do things. Even his last year in Houston, I know the record wasn't good. They were in every game with a bunch of guys where you'd go, I don't know who the hell this guy is, who's on their defense, whatever. And they were in games because he was carrying the squad and making things you know, uh, really close without a DeAndre Hopkins who they had traded that year. If they can get to that confidence back with, uh, with Deshaun Watson and the weapons they got around him, yeah, they could be scary. I remember the comment his personal coach, Quincy Avery, made in the aftermath of that season. He was thrown to a bunch of guys who had been working at Walmart. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Um, and, boy, that week two game at Pittsburgh – Primetime, Monday Night Football, Steelers fans, the first road game, right. Deshaun Watson's first full season as the starter. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to give it to him hard. A rival game like that on Monday Night Football, yeah, the Steelers fans are going to be uh, ready to go. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.